In the previous video, we looked at some of the properties of PT, the time component of four momentum, and we saw that we can interpret this as energy. In this video, I want to look um, a little more closely at the X component, or spatial component, of four momentum, and see how we can interpret that, and along the way, we'll see some relationships between momentum, energy, and mass. So let's start with um, this equation, and this is an equation for the x component of momentum. And so we would interpret this as the relativistic momentum. So more generally, momentum might have an x, y, and z component. I'm going to picture in this video and in this unit that um, we only have objects moving in one spatial direction, so they're not going this way and then that way or anything like that. Um, so that simplify, that'll just simplify a bunch of the notation. So the first thing I want to note here is what happens if v is small? So that's the non-relativistic limit. Um, v is measured in SR units, so 1 is the speed of light. Normal everyday experience, much, much less than the speed of light. And if that's the case, v is small, v squared really small, 1 minus really small is eventually 1, and this just turns into mv. So in the non-relativistic limit, we recover the non-relativistic momentum. So that's um, hopefully a, a reassuring result. All right, so um, let's remind ourselves about relativistic energy. So in the previous video, we had PT, and we said, hey, we can identify that as energy. And that was just M over 1 minus V squared, square root. So just as a reminder, this is relativistic energy. Relativistic energy. Um, so here's the thing to notice. These two formulas are almost the same. The only difference is the presence of this v here. So if I took this and divided it by that, all of this stuff cancels, and I'm just left with v. So that leads us to um, <coughs> this nice result that can be useful sometimes, which says that p over e is just v. So v here is the... Um, relativistic uh, SR speed, relativistic momentum over relativistic energy. <clears throat> All right. Maybe that's important enough that that deserves a box. All right, um, so there's one more relationship that I want to explore. And uh, to do so, I want to take us back to this. So remember we said, all right, so in I'm thinking about space-time and four vectors there. There's this space-time interval that's a, this nice, deeply physical quantity that's the same for all observers. So we said, is there something like that in four momentum? Yes, there is. It's this, and we, um, and that turns out to be equal to the mass of the object. So mass is a frame-independent quantity. Mass is not doesn't depend on what reference frame you're in. So it turns out that if you take the time component of momentum squared minus the spatial component of momentum squared. Square root that, you always get mass. So now that we know that this is energy and this is momentum, we can rewrite that. So I'm going to just take this expression. Let me copy it down and then um, plug in. So this we had m was pt squared minus px squared square root, and usually this is written um, by squaring both sides. We don't that square root there. And so m is m. p squared, or pt squared is e, that's e squared, and px squared is just the momentum if we're dealing in one dimension.
Okay. So, um, we have these two relationships. These are relationships between um, E and P, relativistic energy, relativistic momentum. We have this formula for relativistic momentum. We have this formula for relativistic energy. So um, following this finally is a quiz where you can try out using some of these formulas and then following the quiz, um, I'll make a video showing you the solution to those quiz problems.